And this is where you'll start to see some of those maps view, again, all the ones that are in place. So the network topology, I'm able to see his neighbor, his observed communication. I'll just go ahead and click the virtualization. And what this is going to bring up is the um, uh, it's showing that this box basically is housing. And again, on the left is where you'll have um, any of your legends, so you know what the icons represent. So that will come into play as we continue to look at the maps. But really quickly, I can see here um, this host has a couple of um, applic or VMs running on it. So we do something to that 200 VM, then we're impacting two other machines, and then, of course, right-clicking, you can get in and see the details, what we were looking at previously, so that detailed um, hardware, software information, what's running on this box is what appears at that point. Okay, so here I'm going to back out. I'm going to go back to the Home tab. Again, Home tab is where all my dashboards reside. We've looked kind of at that infrastructure. Um, we'll go into the applications, but before we do that, I want to bring up one aspect. So here I'm going to go into the software products, and let's look at this summary. Um, you'll notice <clears throat> as I'm clicking, only software is appearing on this particular dashboard. So I've got it by publisher, by category. Scroll down a little bit, it's showing me my various database versions. So I can see their IBM, uh, the Microsoft, Postgres, Oracle, etc. But what I'm going to do is come to the top and we're going to look. I mean, really, you could look at any of them, but I'm going to choose the Oracle. Like I say, I got a little over 2% Oracle in the environment. Okay. And so what we're going to do here is for any of these, um, I mentioned Oracle is an application that we know about. That's a business level application. Um, the maps and et cetera, we kind of um, can build that out. We're able to do that. I'm going to switch the tab here really quickly because we have a Configapedia site. And when you hit this Configapedia site, you can really quickly see here my patterns, but I can see my business applications that the solution already has patterns for that we're able to map out. I'm going to go back one level. Uh, find a particular product or device. So the applications are going to be there. My network devices, so really quickly you can be able to see, uh, yeah, we're running this particular um, Cisco switch in the environment. Is ADDM going to be able to discover it? So you can hit the network devices. You can see the printers. You can see any of the S&P managed devices. But again, when you hit this Configapedia page, it's going to show you the apps or devices that we already know about. But understand, because it's a pattern language, you can create your own. So there's a step, of course, a process to go about doing that, but quickly you'll be able to see if it's out there, and if it's not, you can build up your own pattern. Okay, so here we'll go back into the demonstration. Um, there we're just, again, we're looking at the specific oracles, and again, if I wanted to look at the, uh, the versions, remember the filter option is what allows you to do that. This one just puts it in a graph for them, switches it, so we're not looking at rows and columns at this point. It may be in a pie chart by a bar chart, line chart. Okay, at this point, let me switch into the application. So, um, We've uh, done the discoveries, and we'll kind of back in that last part and see what I have to seed the appliance with to get this data. But essentially, we've um, seeded with everything, and so that's why we're able to look at this um, exhaustive detail, if you will, of my devices and my applications. So here, I'm going to hit my application instances. Again, these are going to be my business type applications or the ones that we know we have the maps for. So HM discovering dependency mapping, obviously something that we know about. But you'll notice there's others in here um, that you may not recognize, and that's because they're specific to this environment. Um, what I'm going to do is click on this Imagine one. I'm choosing that one because it has uh, some software instances that are running on it where it's going to create that exhaustive map that we can look at. Okay, and so here we'll just hit the uh, visualizations. 
and let's grab this application dependencies. Okay, now as this is coming up, remember the lower left is where you'll have the legend of what all these icons represent. And what I'm going to do is make it um, a little bit larger. So what I'm doing is changing the zoom to 100. And then what happens is you get this uh, box that allows you to kind of zoom in and pan any, um, on any area in this map and get some detailed information. So there at the top I can see that's the Imagine application that we just looked at. Uh, that blue line, you just kind of here on the left, take this down a little bit, is my connected to. So what I'm going to do is take this over to the left. You can see there it's connected to a mail hub. Taking it down a little bit more. And I've got that it's contained on a couple of uh, hosts here for me. You can see that that's my host. And then I can see here as well it's um, onto a, a cluster. I'm going to take that down just a little bit more so you can see that that actually says cluster. That's a Microsoft cluster. So I've got my mail clustered on 995 and 996. So again, doing any type of changes um, to that specific server potentially is going to impact my mail or that Imagine application. I'm going to take it over, uh, I'm sorry, all the way down to the bottom because there at the bottom we can see that it's all connected into um, that network device and basically that's a switch in the environment. So again, doing any changes on that specific switch impacting my um, Imagine application. Now there's a couple other icons represented in this map. I'm trying to have a steady hand. Um, and I can see quickly there some other um, software instances that are in play. So I've got a web portal. I've got this Sybase database that's um, a requirement for this application. I've got an um, ACE XP, or XP server, etc. So again, really quickly, I'm able to see that Imagine app, so that's my business level application that's in the environment. I'm able to see the, the hardware that it, I'm sorry, the dependencies all the way down to the network devices, and as well as any of the software. So if we were to go and make changes, maybe we need to do a patch to Sybase, here's the impact of doing that. So again, any of these views are going to be able to show you that. I'm going to hit the back button. And basically this is just going to take us back to my Applications tab. Okay. Um, there um, underneath Application Summary you'll see the application mapping. So these are the applications that we've mapped in-house or we will with that collaborative application mapping. So that's where um, I'm noticing communications, um, the uh, application owner may have given me a couple keywords, and that is where I kind of head off, if you will, and then get um, or start to notice any of the communications, get that map, and then go through that several iterations until we come up with the, the firm map for that application. Okay. So um, there's one other thing that is in play uh, when you start to do your application maps or start to notice any of that communication. And what I'm going to do at this point is switch into this default dashboard so we can see that automatic grouping. Probably should have showed this one first. So here I'm just again switching to the default dashboard. I have this automatic grouping and I'm going into this overview. So here you'll notice that um, the, the groups basically mean that there was some observed communication between some hosts. And then we can go in and see, hey, what's the communication occurring between these specific apps? So what we'll do here is, let's see, clients group. We're going to look at this particular group. So what I'm doing is right-clicking, and let's do an open. And you can see there I've got um, 14, so I've got 14 um, of those hosts communicating over there. And what I'm going to do, let me um, blow this up a little bit so we can see what those host names are. Okay. And let's pan it out just a little bit. All right. So you'll notice these dotted lines. 
um, that's what we say is that observed communication. So what I'm going to do is just right-click. You can just, with a steady hand, of course, right-click on that, do the show communication summary. And what I'm, I, again, it's that dotted line between the 995 mail server and this 999 BB server. So naming-wise, I may assume that's BlackBerry, but what I'm able to see with that communication is the local IP and the port, you'll notice as well, is captured and what that remote process is. And then again, the port that it's communicating on. So I can see there the calendar helper application, the enterprise agent, um, and then my database consistency check. So again, that's going to be um, pertinent for me or informative for me as I go and start building out any of my applications around um, those two boxes and what actually, if, at this point, I could take those processes and start to build my application map based upon that information that I know. Okay. So here, uh, Dick, let me do about, um, we're at... 10 till, almost 10 till. Let me do a couple more things here, and then we can catch some of the questions. Um, okay, so we've done the home screen. We've looked at my applications. Um, you'll notice as I've been going through, it's jumping me across these various tabs, so it automatically thrusts me to where I need to be. But again, that infrastructure tab um, had my host, it has my printers, basically all of my infrastructure is residing here, as well as the reports that are pertinent for infrastructure. This discovery tab, though, is where you are going to seed it with the information, the credentials that it needs to perform that exhaustive discovery. So you'll notice when I did that, now I have several tabs underneath discovery where I can enter some data. So here I've got my credentials. And you'll notice for my devices, I've got Windows, my SNMP, vCenter, we're able to go in and build that up for you or build the map for your vCenter um, environment, for your vSphere environment. Databases, again, you're able to enter the credentials there and um, build up any of the maps or discoveries, again, whatever's pertinent in your environment. So, again, many credentials that you can enter so that you can do a good discovery and have a good understanding of the applications that are running and then potentially the hardware that it's running on top of. Okay? My pattern management. So out of the box, uh, let me just scroll down here. What you'll see, you know, a lot of these where the pattern modules is a single digit, so that's going to be where um, it is a custom application. But you'll notice here I've got this one, so that's the core um, set that we're giving you out of the box. It's going to update monthly where you can continue to increase that number as well as um, any of the ones that you ha are building up separately. Okay, here, let me go back. It seems like that jumped on me. I've got those patterns. We're going back to the top. My integration points would be to other databases that you may want to pull out information like um, an application owner or the location of a specific device, application, etc. Uh, the last tab here is the administration. I skipped reports just because the reports are kind of all throughout. That reports tab is a subset of all the reports of the system. This administration tab is where you would come and do things like sync to the CMDB. Um, so you'll notice under the model, I have my CMDB sync. Um, your security policy is going to be here. If you're going to integrate your login with a directory, that's all under security. But a couple things to point out. I'm hitting the platforms. So these are the platforms that we're going to be able to hit. So you'll notice under Windows, I'm going to just go ahead and hit this Windows Discovery. These are the queries that we're running against the Windows boxes to return that information. So if you don't provide us with the WMI queries, we can still hit the box, but we're really going to only run a subset of the script. So it won't be as exhaustive, but you will still get some data back. Um, 